These old air motor windmills are amazing. Simple mechanical motors powered by the wind. They have been pumping water since 1888. This old mill has probably been pumping water here on the ranch for 60 to 70 years. Tough and reliable pumps with no electronics. Simple machines that just work and keep working. Don't you wish everything was built to last like these old air motors? This off-grid water system and attached garden is my prep. I don't store or stockpile water, food, or other items. Instead, I think a better route for preparedness is to have a good water source, an off-grid water system, and a food production system, a garden. Am I a prepper? My dad calls preppers preppies. Yeah, I'm a prepper in my own way. I'm a preppy. I enjoy conveniences. I don't live off the grid or homestead, but I have seen how complicated and fragile global supply chains are. And I'm not a fan of our fiat currency that loses value every day. At the time of this video, summer 2024, inflation is out of control. Hard earned dollars don't go very far at the grocery store. Most of this is completely out of our control. And that's not to mention natural disasters that can shut down society's modern conveniences in an instant. I think one of the biggest shocks our society could see is the loss of our electrical grid. This could be caused by man or the sun could just have a bad day. It's happened before. Look up the Carrington event. A grid down situation could last for months or years. No more internet, banking system, home heating, city waterworks, etc etc the electrical grid hasn't been around very long but most of us myself included are addicted to it so i built an off-grid water system and garden from this old mill and storage tank wind and gravity it doesn't get much simpler than that but i couldn't help myself i added a modern dc drip irrigation system powered by four nine volt batteries this timer conveniently and automatically waters the garden i'm excited to make this video and show you my off-grid water system and garden it's what I name my YouTube channel after, The Windmill Garden. Fellow preppies, gardeners, off-gridders, homesteaders, and nerds, come check out The Windmill Garden. I hope it blows your socks off. <laughs>
connected to two large gears with pitman arms on them. This raises and lowers the pump rod. This piece is called a stuffing box or a packer. This stuffing box is what makes it possible for the windmill to pump water uphill to the storage tank. There's a greasy rope inside this nut. It seals around this shaft, won't let the water out. It lets a little bit, it leaks a little bit, but not bad. Every now and then, you have to tighten up this packing nut. So that's the well and the windmill. That's our off-grid water source and our off-grid water pump. I have a short video where I open up the motor's gearbox, take the cover off and show the gears. I'm not gonna go up there today, it's just way too windy. Moving on from the well, water is being piped underground and our next stop is this filter pit. In this pit, I have two filters to clean up the water a little bit. Here's the water from the well, the windmill. There's a union. Filter one, filter two, another union, and a check valve. In case you have to work on this, the water from the tank won't leak back. These are big blue 20 inch by four inch filters. I put a string wound five micron filter here just for debris. And I used to run a carbon filter in this one. Haven't been doing that lately. Definitely time for a filter change. Here's how much water the windmill puts out in a low wind. You can see the stroke of the windmill. Now let's go up the hill, check out the storage tank. This old storage tank's about 30 feet in elevation higher than the garden. For every 10 feet of elevation, it's about 4.1 PSI. That gives me about 12 PSI water pressure down there. That's not a lot of water pressure, but it's enough to run the solenoid valves on the drip system. Let's lift that lid off and take a look inside the tank. One for the money, two for the show, three to get ready. Go shoulders, go. Under the water in this storage tank, you'll see three pipes. That tallest pipe is a water overflow back to the well. The middle pipe is water supply from the well. And the short pipe is water supply to the garden. Now let's go down and check out the garden. Inside the garden fence now, this is a valve, turns water on and off to the drip system. This valve turns water on and off to a hydrant. Here's a frost-free hydrant. This will still work after that EMP attack. This is a Galcon timer. It's DC, runs on four nine volt batteries. This timer controls 12 valves. You can set the duration for irrigation time, what days you want to irrigate, and start and stop times. Each garden bed and some of the trees have their own valve. Valves are in those PVC standpipes. It's too bad that the EMP fried the computer and the electronics on the timer, but I can still use these valves. I can turn them on and off right here.
The drip tubing in all these beds is a foot apart. Let's dig down and see if we can find one. A good, reliable, off-grid water system. We lost our timer and the EMP, but our garden's still gonna get irrigated. Thanks for hanging out at the windmill garden. If you found this information useful, like and subscribe. And then in the comments, tell us about your water system, be it on grid or off. See you next time, preppies.